Okay, so just to... Uh, Okay, I want to, uh, first of all, if you turn to page, turn to page, oh, maybe not. Hold on. So, so one of the uh, one of the first names we came across in in, in the course of this semester was uh, was Erdős. So when um, when we did degree sequences, when we did the Havel Hakimi, um, and there was another one. There was Erdős Galai, um, and uh, I'm just uh, I just want to. You know, let you know about um, so so Ernish was um, probably the most is probably the most prolific um, graph theorist ever, um, maybe the most prolific mathematician. Uh, his his publication list is over fifteen hundred research papers, and um, he's done uh, a lot of fundamental work in in graph theory. Again. His name comes up quite often in most graph theory books. And next Wednesday, next Wednesday at anybody six thirty. Okay, so next Wednesday, I believe it's at six thirty. At the other end. The other end of this building, on this floor, you know, there's an open space down there. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be giving a talk about about Paul Erdős, um, and um, again, you might want to, um, you might want to read up about uh, about some of his some of his work and and where his uh, and some of the history behind behind. Um, uh, what his mathematics was all about, and uh, the impact he's had on on multi uh, disciplines in mathematics, and uh, I'll I'll uh, tell you a little bit about him, and then some of my own personal experiences with him. So, um, if you're interested, next Wednesday, 6:30, down there, and um, are there refreshments. Uh, yeah, usually they. I think there's refreshments, but don't count. Don't 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 hold me to it. Refresh before. <laughs> yeah, refresh before or come and see, and then. Uh, but it's it's a uh, you know it's a uh, uh, a little bit about uh, the history of mathematics and the history of graph theory, and um, maybe you'll um, uh, you'll find something that's interesting that will encourage you to um, work on on problems in graph theory. Albeit, I hope it's not problem four from problem five from the test. Okay, I have homeworks. Remind me, I'll, I'll hand back the homeworks uh, towards the end of class. So um, I know this is going backwards, but um, I want to go back to the Königsberg bridge problem, which was which was day one. So do you remember what that what that was? Oh yeah. So it's on page it's on page one. Page one. Yeah, so so if you remember so the the Pringle River separates uh, separates uh, two pieces of land and there's two islands and there's bridges. And there's bridges that connect the pieces of, of land. And if you've ever been to Europe, um, 
there still are many magnificent bridges uh, crossing over the, the, the Danube and, and various uh, rivers throughout, throughout Europe. Um, and, and the townspeople of Pregel, which is where this, where this really was, uh, wanted to cross each of the bridges exactly once and end up where they started. So again, just to remind you, cross each bridge once and end up, end up where you start. And, and, and of course, I, I, I think you, we all sort of um, realize that maybe this couldn't be done. Did, did you try and do that? But this was, this sort of led to, led to the introduction of, of graphs, of multi-graphs. So we let each bridge correspond to an edge. Each landmass correspond to a vertex. And we turned this into a, a graph problem. So put your pencil down on the graph and traverse each edge exactly once. So take a minute. Just make sure that you can do it or you can't do it. So if it helps, I'll, I'll label these, so let's see, A, B, C, and D. Class got smaller. <laughs> Okay, so what, what did you find out? You think it's impossible? Okay, so, do, do I? I can't do it, it's impossible. <laughs> Any, anybody, anybody? So, so the, the problem is this uneven. Every time, let's, let's, let's just imagine we start, it doesn't really matter where we start, we start at A. So, every time I leave A, I, I mean, I want to start and end at A, Every time I start at, at A, some point I have to come back. You know, it, only has, it only has degree three. So I come back, and then I'm forced to leave again and never to return. OK, so there's no way that I can traverse each of these edges exactly once and come back to the start. So let's, uh, so now, now this is, these are actual definitions. So um, a closed, remind me what a walk is. I know you just told me what a walk was on the test. What, what's what's a, a walk? Sequence of edges and vertices. Um, that it can repeat edges or vertices and goes E1, B1, E2. All okay, so V1, E1, V2, E2, E2, and so on. Okay, and so forth. And, and the important thing is that um, V1 
V I E I V I plus one. Edge EI, we're not just taking random edges, the edge EI is the edge between vertex VI and VI plus one. So that's a walk. So um, what I want to, what I want to, um, so we want to sort of explore this a little bit. So if I was to traverse every edge, Every time I came into a, every time I came into a vertex, so let's imagine that we start at A and we end up, we go to D. And now I still have edges that I need to traverse, so I need to leave D. So pick an edge. Pick a bridge that you want to cross. D, no, I'm at D. I'm at the point D. What is it? What, what bridge? Which bridge? You want, you, want, you want this bridge, right? Okay, so, so I leave D. And now I gotta leave C. So, let, where would you like to go? I'm at C. Where, where do you want to go? Back. You want to go back to D. Okay. So, let, be, before I go any further, when I cross this bridge, when I cross this bridge, notice uh, I can't get back to C. I've used up all of C edges, C's bridges, except for this one. When I get back to C, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. So let's see what what what's the problem? I I come into I come into C. I leave C. So we kind of pair these edges bridges up in twos, okay? So if a vertex has odd degree, we have a problem. We have a problem. Okay, so, so um, and we can see that in fact uh, we have four problems here. Okay, so that's, that's going to be, uh, that's going to be difficult. So, so um, let's, let's uh, define a few things. So a circuit, is a closed, closed walk with no repeated edges. So that's a circuit. And the goal is now, when can I find a closed walk that contains all the edges? I don't need to. I don't need to say contains all the edges exactly once because that that comes for the definition. So when does a graph G contain a closed walk with all the edges? Okay, and before you we, we come up with an answer, I want in your, on your tables, I want you to look at uh, page. So let's look at uh, page 166. Page 166. So um, here are here are um, here's a, a graph on on figure 4.1.1. So I want you to decide whether we can have a, whether we have a closed walk, a circuit that starts and ends at the same point, so it's closed, and contains all the edges. So I want you to do that for 4.1.1. Of course, if you have read forward, uh, you realize that um, I think uh, B gives you the answer. But once you, uh, once you actually traverse each of the edges in A, in 4.1.1, then I want you to look at uh, the, prob the problems, the graphs in 4.1.2, and then the graphs in 4.1.3. So find a close, a circuit, find a circuit With no, so it doesn't have any repeated edges. 
that contains all, all the edges. So all the edges, and that would be necessarily all the edges exactly once. I'll put it, I'll rewrite it. But it's redundant. Okay, so you're looking at, you're looking at the problems on page uh, 166. Again, for practice, you might want to look at 4.1.1, 4.1.1.1, and then 4.1.2, and then 4.1.3. And there are microphones around, so you might want to talk to your table mates. So you know what we're doing?
So just a 4.1.1? Yes. Yes, what? You found a closed circuit that contains, it's closed circuit also that's redundant, and it contains all the edges exactly once. Okay, so um, we found two different ones. I started with the X, but she started with the Okay, so so just uh, and I think uh, so. Give me a, a sequence of edges. Okay, so I went um, X E one E one W E two E two W E three W E four. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. So I I got uh, you started at X. X, E1, E2, E3, E4, okay, E5, E6, E6, E8, E8 E9, 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 very good. Are there others? Probably. Okay. And, and, and again, it's, it, it, there's something nice about this graph that lets us do it. Okay, what about 4.1.2? These are not labeled, it makes it that much more difficult to say what the circuits are or aren't. But what are your answers? Can you, do you have an answer for A, B, C, or D? Again, 4.1.2. What? What? You're reading ahead. No, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> okay, so 4.1 point. So, so if you read, if you read ahead, um, so as long as the graph has all vertices of even degree, and one more thing that often that that students often forget, the graph's got to be connected. Right? If, there's, if it's not connected, there's no way you can get from one piece to the other. Right? So, connected, all degrees are even, all degrees are even, then there is a circuit containing all the edges. And notice, using the word circuit automatically says there's no repeated edges. And, and again, if you go back to the 1790s when Euler published this, he, he didn't have a picture of this, but he talks about the, 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 these bridges, and his proof is, as long as it's even and connected, whatever that means, then whenever we get to a piece of land, we can get off the piece of land. So he, it, it's, it's, it's the reason that we call this an Eulerian circuit. Okay, so if all the degrees are even and the graph is connected. What about 4.1.3? Are all the degrees even? Okay, all the degrees are not even. But these are two special, these are, sorry, I gave it away. These all have two special points. What are the degrees? For example, 4.1.3D, what, what is the degrees of 4.1.3D? The, the, the degrees, the sequence. Wait a minute, say that again. Four, 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 three, three. Okay, so there's, there's exactly two odds. So let me ask, can you start at one of the threes, traverse each edge exactly once, 
and they dump at the other three. You think that's right, but can you do it? Okay, so if we have connected, it's pretty important. If we have any chance. So if I have a connected graph where I have all even degrees except two. Now, uh, can I have three odd degrees? Why not? Can I have one odd degree? Why not? So if I only have one odd degree, I get a bunch of even, 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 odd. So even plus even plus even plus even plus even plus even plus even is even plus an odd. One odd makes the whole sum odd. So we know that every graph has an even number of odd degrees. Okay? So in fact, I know that I can't have one odd degree. So if it's connected, and, and this is important because if it's connected and all but two degrees are even, that means exactly two are odd, then there's an Eulerian trail So an Eulerian trail, one that contains, it's a trail that contains all the edges, and it's not necessarily closed. So it contains all the edges exactly once. So if it contains all the edges exactly once, what can you tell me about the starting and ending point? So let's, uh, let's imagine, in the middle, we go through this point over here, we go through it once, and then we come around and we go through it again, and then there's another point, and then we go through it again. What can you tell me about the degree of a point that's in the middle of this trail? The degree in the middle, in a point in the middle of this trail? Even. Do what? Even. It's even. And, and by middle, I mean anywhere except for the ends. <coughs> Okay, so if I start at this point, we go out of it, we go, we traverse all the edges. If we've traversed all the edges, then we've traversed all of the, ver all of the edges from this point here, an odd vertex, and I must end up at the other odd vertex. Okay, and that's called, so this is a Eulerian trail. Again, he didn't name it. That'd be pretty conceited. And this is an Eulerian circuit. So just so uh, let's look at four point one point three. So each of those have how many odd vertices? When I say odd vertices means it has odd degree. So I'm looking at 4.1.3. Okay, it sounds like they each have two odd vertices. A's two odd vertices are the first two, whatever that means. So, so one, three, two, two of the degrees. Then there is there is a trail that contains each of the edges exactly once that starts 
at one of the, one of the odds and ends at the other odd. So I start at the one, go to three, two, two, three. Notice I've traversed each edge exactly once and I started at the odd point and I ended at the other odd point. Okay, by the way, I could have started of course at this odd point and gone around and then out. Notice it would be bad if I took three and went this way and tried to continue because there's nothing to continue. Okay, so, so again, I can't stress enough, don't let me ever confuse you on a test. The graph has got to be connected, otherwise there's no chance. There's no chance of the graph being Eulerian. Okay, so, so uh, I just, just for the heck of it, let's look at the bottom page 167. 167, consider the following multigraph. I'm going to skip to II. Find a circuit with two edges, three edges, four edges. A circuit, it means it's just, it's, it's a sequence of vertices and edges where no, no edge is repeated. Doesn't have to be closed, doesn't have to end where it started, just a circuit. Okay, so find a circuit in G with two edges, three edges, four edges. <coughs> Isn't a circuit closed? Sorry, sorry, it's closed. Did I say not closed? I heard it. I might. So, not sorry, closed. There. Circuit means you come back to where you started. <coughs> circuit with two edges. There's only one. Of course, he could have labeled the vertices for us. So that's uh, that's uh, those two edges on the side. So we go up and down. So that's a circuit with two edges. A circuit with three edges. The triangle. By the way, it just turns out that sometimes a circuit is a cycle. Sometimes. It doesn't have to be, but in this case, the circuit is a, in this case, there's a circuit with, that's a cycle. The triangle at the top is a circuit, closed trail that doesn't repeat any edges, and it contains three edges in it. Uh, four edges, I'll let you. Okay, so find, I'm at III. Find in G a circuit with five edges that's not a cycle. It, it, it could have labeled, they could have labeled the vertices, it would have made it easier. I'll, I'll label it. So here's, here's the graph. So I'm going to label the vertices uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So again, a circuit with two edges is only one, and that would be 1, 2, 2, 1. A circuit with three edges? Now you can read off the numbers. It depends. So, so one, four, five, one would be a circuit. Yeah, and and uh, some of the some of the pictures, some of the diagrams that he has, he's labeled the the edges. So if we label the edges E one, E two, E three, then that would be that would correspond to a circuit. Okay, it depends, it's just up to you or the book or, so for example, 4.1.1, 4.1.1, he's got each of the edges labeled so we can actually list it by the edges rather than by the vertices. Okay, so uh, how about uh, a circuit with five edges that's not a cycle? Circuit, Circuit means that it's closed, it's connected, all degrees are even, uh, let's see, containing all the edges. So a circuit is a closed walk with no repeated edges. Closed walk. Walk can repeat vertices. And here we're not allowing any repeated 
Thank you. That one? Close walk with five edges. Uh, five, four. What's in? Five, four. One. One. Two. Two. One. One. Five. Five, four, five, four, one, two, one, five. So that's five edges. One edge, one edge, two edges, three edges, four edges, five edges. Okay, that's a that's a that's a circuit. No edges, no edge was repeated. It's closed. It started with it ends where it started. So we're in good shape. Is that clear? Yeah. Repeated vertices, repeated vertices are allowed. Repeated edges are not. Okay, find a circuit with six edges. That one? Okay. Sequence? Four, two, three. What is it? Four, two, three, four, five. Four, five. One, four. Oh, I raised it. One, four. Is that what you? Okay. It's closed. Four, two, three, four. Four, two, three, four. Five, one, four. Okay. Starts and ends at the same place. Contains six edges. Okay. Now you want to, you might want to look at this and say, does, is there one with seven? Is there one with eight? And finally, is there one with nine? Let's see. Do I have the right number? Is there one with nine? Well, wait. wait. That looks like only eight edges. Is there one with eight? Yeah. Okay, if there was a closed circuit with eight, it would be an Eulerian circuit because there is only eight edges. And the only, the only way I'm going to have an Eulerian circuit is if... Even. All even degrees. And let's see, are all degrees even? Let's see, it looks like uh, two, four, two, four, four. All the degrees are even. Is the graph, and this is, this is important because sometimes I slip one in. Is the graph connected? It's pretty simple to say that it's connected. So in fact, this is, there is an Eulerian circuit, and in fact, you can pretty much find it pretty directly. Okay. Questions? Okay. So I, I just want you to. So on page 168, here are uh, five more graphs. Uh -huh. um, so, so it seems to be Eulerian since they're all a even. even degree. Right. And it says if W is an Euler circuit in G, exactly how many edges are contained in W? Uh -huh. But it seems like we could. Okay, so the whole thing could be W. So, so when we so when we say an Eulerian circuit, it automatically contains all the edges in the graph. Oh, that's what it's. That's right. I, I thought it was looking for a number. No, like, no, no, it no. Like there are multiple. No, no, no. Eulerian means all. So Eulerian, going back to the bridges, we cross each bridge exactly once. Gotcha. We traverse each edge exactly once. That's what it means to be Eulerian. And and closed.
Okay, I don't want you to, I don't want you to. By the way, here's a, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, if you turn to page 180. Okay, so, so this is a, this is a problem that I've given to elementary school kids. Okay, so, so imagine that this is a house or a building or whatever you want it to be. And the little, so each of these little open spots correspond to a door. Okay, so, so on the A, a I, I can't even count how many doors there are, but however many doors there are. Okay, so I have so many doors. And you ask, a, a, it's, it's fun to ask a, a child to go through each door, can you go through each door exactly once? Okay, so if you're, if you're tired of looking at real graphs, now you can look at this, this house layout. And again, what I'm asking for is, can we traverse through the house? Let's say we start in the outside. Can you traverse through the house, the house and go through each door exactly once and end up back outside? See, I bet you didn't realize that third graders can do graph theory. And they work really hard at trying to get through those doors. Sometimes the imaginative ones put extra doors in. They both, you can do them both? No. No, you can't do them both. One. Second one's got an odd vertex. Has only one odd vertex? Well, one of them I can't really tell if it's a door or not. So, <laughs> but, but whether it's it is or not, door. there's at least one odd vertex. There's one, at least one odd yeah. vertex, okay. If it's a graph, there would be exactly two or maybe four. Or, right? Odd. This, oh, this right, right. There's odd number. Right. An even number of odd vertices. Oh, wait, that's a good point. So it's going to be... Oh, you're just like the sixth graders. They want you to start at A and end at B. So why are you Which? Oh, yeah, that looks like a typo. That then on on. Uh, where was that? Oh yeah, so so on the second one on B, little B, I, I don't think that's that's not a little door there in in the room right under big B. 
I don't. I, I don't think that's a, it's, it's just like a inks skip. So that room has three doors. It, it doesn't work. You're just, I mean, think about, you're, you're at these odds, and you're stuck. You, you know, you come in an even number of times, and then you can't go back. Right. Okay, I'm going to leave these, I'm going to leave these for you to do, and now I'm going to ask you another question. Okay, so, so we have a, a precise way of deciding when I can traverse each edge in a graph. One more time, if I have a graph with it's connected and all the vertices have even degree, connected, all the vertices have an even degree, then I can find a trail that contains each edge exactly once. And it's a closed trail. So I can start and end at any point. Connected, even degree at any point. Even degree at every point. Okay. If I have two odd vertices, two vertices of odd degree, and all the other ones are even, and the graph is connected, then there's an open Eulerian trail. So I can start at an odd point and end at the other odd point. Okay, everybody with me? And you traverse every edge exactly once. So let me change it. Take a graph G. I, I don't know what condition you can, we'll put some conditions on it or we won't. I want to find a cycle. Does there exist? A cycle, what's it, what, remind me of a cycle, what's a cycle? A closed path. So no vertices are repeated. No edges are repeated. So a, 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 there exists a cycle which contains all the vertices. Okay, so let's, uh, let's, um, uh, let's see. I want to. I want to make one. I want to try and make one that's not. Let's try. Let's try. Let's try. It's pretty hard. All right. Let's let's uh, let's start with something pretty simple. Okay. So there's a K five. So I want to find a closed path. Path. No vertex is repeated. No edge is repeated. I start and end at the same point that contains each of the vertices each of the vertices of the graph. Can you do that? 
I see a yes and a no. One more time. Oh. A closed path. I see a I see two yeses. Closed path. So you start at a, at a vertex. You can choose which vertex you want to start at. And can you traverse, can you go, find a cycle that contains, in this case, five vertices? I was thinking all edges. No, no, yeah, yeah. That would be hard. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so does this one contain a cycle that contains all five vertices? Mm -hmm. Pretty simple to find. In fact, there's, there's many of them. Okay, so I haven't drawn this graph up in a while. Okay, but it looks just like this, kind of. Kind of looks like this. I forgot, what, what's this graph called? It, it looks just like this, kind of. Okay, here's the question. Is there a cycle that contains, well, is there a 10 cycle? Is there a cycle that contains all 10 points? Pretty quick to say no. Pretty quick to say yes. You get nine, okay, but you can't, you can't get ten. I mean, you have more edges. Okay, certainly there's a five cycle. So where's, where's there a nine cycle? Start here? In? Um, I, I think I went across. Yeah. Go back out. And then go up and around. So the only point that I'm missing is this one. Uh, we should have been able to get that one somehow. Maybe uh, when I came to this point, go out here. Okay, let me ask. Does this contain a 10 cycle. I mean, maybe the problem is that all the degrees are odd. Notice for an Eulerian circuit, all the degrees were even. Okay, so, so over the next two days, there's homework. Okay, there's homework. It's a repeat of one of the problems from the test. You can op use the book. You can do anything you want. Just don't I mean be as accurate as possible and make the proof complete, all the details, so I don't have to shed any tears. Okay. All right, so one more time. So um, question, does this contain a 10 cycle? And are there conditions for when a graph I mean, there's a condition for when a graph contains a Eulerian circuit, a circuit that contains all the edges. Is there a condition on when a graph contains a cycle that contains all the vertices? Okay, we're going from all the edges to all the vertices. All the edges, pretty simple. What's the requirement for all the edges? 
all even. All even. <clears throat> even degree. And connected. And connected. And connected. That's important. Because every once in a while, I'll slip one in that's not connected, and then you'll go, huh? OK, so there's a nice close form for an Eulerian circuit. Is there a close form for this cycle, which is called a Hamiltonian cycle? Named after mathematician, actually a physicist from the middle 1800s. Okay, so, so is there a Hamiltonian cycle in the Peterson graphs? If you remember, this is the Peterson graph. Okay, so, so I also, it's, there are actually problems in the book, but I'd like you to think about what, if I take a KMN, what, what is that? What is KMN? KMN, what is it? Complete bipartite. Complete bipartite, and what is that? I mean, those words sound kind of fishy. All right, so it's, um, what, what's the word? Bipartitions into a M-sized part and a N-sized part. Okay, so I have M vertices and N vertices. I don't know which one is bigger. N vertices. And it's complete, meaning? Every edge in M is connected to every edge in N. So, and if you think I'm going to draw them all in, you're wrong. Okay, so all the edges on the top, sorry, all the vertices on the top are adjacent to all the vertices on the bottom. One of the questions in the book is, can you find conditions on when that graph is Eulerian? Is this, is this, Eulerian. Eulerian, again, means that there is a circuit that contains all the edges. Is this Eulerian? That's question one. Question two is, is this Hamiltonian? So, I mean, is there a cycle, a cycle that contains all the vertices exactly once? So give me conditions on when this is Eulerian and when this is Hamiltonian. Okay, contains a cycle on all the, all the verses. Okay, <clears throat> so I'd like you to uh, reread uh, uh, 4.5, sorry, 4.4. We did not go over, I apologize, the Chinese postman problem. But if you want, uh, if you want uh, an interesting story, you might, read on page uh, 187 and 188 what the Chinese postman problem is. By the way, on the 191, can you read that? What, what does it say? Does it say anything? On the bottom of page 191? <clears throat> oh, it's a funny story. Oh, everybody's laughing. Tell us what, is it funny? No. All right. Okay. Then don't tell us. Okay. So, uh, so you want to you want to look at some Eulerian problems, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a little bit of history. I mean, this is this is really interesting. So, Hamilton came up with this idea of traversing each each visiting each city, looking at a graph as a map of the world and visiting each city exactly once. And on page 201, he was an entrepreneur, didn't make much money, but he actually created a game called the Round the World Game. They name it the Icasa, Icasian Game, because it's an icosahedron. And you're supposed to actually traverse this with your little pegs, visit each of the holes exactly once, and come back to the start. Okay, sometimes uh, the problem gets a little bit more interesting and something like, uh, can you find a cycle with five cities on it? 
these are supposed to, it's around the world, these are supposed to relate to cities in the world at that time. And he actually had some, there was actually a, a, a global version of it where the cities were marked. And you would, you would actually connect the path between them. And, and uh, the edges would correspond to whether there were train, train, uh, uh, trains that went between the two cities. So you, want, you might want to look at, uh, read a little bit about the around the world and split, spanning cycles, <coughs> Hamilton cycles, as we've said. And then uh, that's where we'll start on Thursday, and I'll have you test for you. I'll make it through uh, and finish the grading of those tests. Questions? Questions? Comments? Anything? Is our grade on this homework three going to replace the score on problem five? Yeah, I haven't. I haven't thought. I, I mean, you all should pay for problem five. I struggled <laughs> through. I struggled through it. I bet I spent two hours on it. Um, uh, I don't know yet. Okay. No, no. I mean, the test grades aren't up yet, so maybe you're all going to get 95s. I don't think so, but maybe. <laughs> okay. Questions? See you Thursday. Um, what, what? I guess it probably says on the campus exactly what it was, wasn't it? It was just any.